Hi everyone, it's Kelly here. Welcome to my channel if this is your first time. Welcome back if you've been before. Lovely to have you either way on this channel we talk books and today I am bringing to you my uh, book haul of December. So all of the books that I acquired in the month of December, some of them new, some of them secondhand. Let's get straight into it. Uh, I am going to start with uh, the last two books that I have received from a subscription that I have am going to be finishing up with at the end of this year. I've been doing it for a whole year, uh, and that is from Amplify at Bookstore. This is the bookmark they sent me. There's oh gosh, you're not gonna be able to read those. There's their details. I'll put them down below as well. Um, so I have been subscribing to um, one of the book boxes from Amplify Bookstore uh, all year. And this is these are the two books that I received in my final parcel for this year. Um, so the first one is called Pink Slime by Fernanda Trias, translated by Heather Cleary. Uh, this is... Uh, a winner of the Uruguayan National Literature Prize for Fiction, the Bartolome Hidalgo Fiction Prize, and the Sor Juana Inez de la Cruz Literature Prize. Okay, not prizes any of those prizes I know of, but obviously this is a, an interesting book because it has won a lot of prizes. Uh, okay, it says a port city is in the grips of an ecological crisis. The river has filled with toxic algae and a deadly red wind red wind blows through its streets. Much of the coast has been evacuated as the wealthy migrate inland to safety, leaving the rest to shelter in abandoned houses as blackouts and food shortages abound. The unnamed narrator is one of those who has stayed. She spends her days trying to disentangle herself from the two relationships that had once meant everything to her and looking after the young boy who's been placed in her care. As the world in which they move becomes smaller, she reflects on the collapse of the other emotional ties in her life and the emergence of a radical yet tender solitude. So this sounds really, really fascinating. I'm looking forward to getting to that one at some point soon. Uh, the second book that I got is this one, Liliana's Invincible Summer by Christ Christina Rivera Garza. Uh, this one... Does it have a... Yeah, here we go. It says, On the dawn of the 16th of July, 1990, Liliana Rivera Garza was murdered by her ex-boyfriend and subsumed into Mexico's dark and relentless history of femicide. She was a 20-year-old architecture student who had been trying for years to end her relationship with a high school boyfriend who insisted on not letting her go. A few weeks before the tragedy, Liliana made a definitive decision at the height of winter. She had discovered that, as Albert Camus had said, there was an invincible summer in her. She would leave him behind. She would start a new life. She would do a master's degree and a doctorate. She would travel to London. But his decision was that she would not have a life without him. Um, so that sounds tragic, um, but also important. So excited about that one. Uh, also, as part of this um, book box, they send you a little gift with each um, each box. And this one is a coaster. It says on the back, it's a Bethlehem flower coaster, hand-stitched at Atfaluna. Uh, Atfaluna Crafts. But I'm not sure what, com what country it comes from. Um, but yeah, it's a really cool coaster. So now that I've shown it to you, I can actually use it as a coaster. <laughs> so I've been putting it aside to make this video. So that's exciting. Um, so yeah, uh, that has been a really interesting experience for me. Having uh, That's the first time I've ever done a subscription book box. Um, and I recommend it if you're in Australia. I think they only ship to Australia, but I may be wrong about that. So um, check it out. I'll link to it in the description below. Okay, moving on to some other new books that have turned up this month um, and are part, now part of my collection. I've got a couple of classics. Uh, this one is, I believe, the new Penguin Clothbound Classics, the small ones. They have a separate thing. They're just the small Clothbound Classics. Anyway, this is uh, Letters to a Young Poet by Raina Maria Rilke. Um, I have read 
a little bit of Rilke that didn't super excite me, but I know this is um, supposed to be a really good work of his, so I'm looking forward to getting to that one. Uh, another classic that I've picked up is this one, Fidelity by Susan Glaspell. Um, this one, actually this should be in the second hand section, because I got this from... It's alright, we'll talk about it now. <laughs> um, so this is a Persephone Books um, copy of... Fidelity by Susan Glassball. Uh Let me see if I've got the synopsis. No, no synopsis. Um, but I'd read about this one and it just sounded really interesting. So I that's why I picked it up. So that's that one. Uh, another classic that I picked up is this one, um, which is What Maisie Knew by Henry James. Um, I specifically picked this one up because it was on sale. It's not because I specifically know much about this one um, but I decided to pick that one up and I might as well show you the other classic because there's only one more in the second hand section and that's uh, Crime and Punishment by Fyodor Dostoevsky um, this is an Oxford world's classic uh, classics collection book um, which is sort of a growing part of my classics collection so I got this one for three dollars bargain okay so those are the classics that I picked up Let's get back to now our new books um, that I've got. There's a few uh, fiction books and then a couple of non-fiction. So we'll start with the fiction. Uh, this one is called To Shape a Dragon's Breath by Moniquil Black Goose. Um, this, I believe, is from a First Nations Canadian author, but I might be wrong about that. She might be American, um, but I'm, I'm not 100% sure. Uh, so let me tell you about this one. This one just sounded really, really fascinating to me. So this is a sort of um, fantasy, uh, and it says, The remote island of Masquapaug has not seen a dragon in many generations until 15-year-old Aniquis finds a dragon's egg and bonds with its hatchling. Her people are delighted, for all remember the tales of the days when dragons lived among them and danced away to the danced away the storms of autumn, enabling the people to thrive. To them, Aniquis is revered as Nampesh... I'm going to say this 100% wrong, so apologies. Nampeshiwesit, a person in a unique relationship with a dragon. Unfortunately for Aniquis, the English conquerors of her land have different opinions. They have a very specific idea of how a dragon should be raised and who should be doing the raising. And Aniquis does not meet any of their requirements. Only with great relux reluctance do they allow Aniquis to enroll in a proper English dragon school in on the mainland. If she cannot succeed there, her dragon will be killed. For a girl with no formal schooling, a non-English upbringing, and a very different understanding of the history of her land, challenges abound, both socially and academically. But Aniquis is smart, determined, and resolved to learn what she needs to help her dragon, even if it means teaching herself. The one thing she refuses to do, however, is become the meek English miss that everyone expects. Sounds really good, so I'm uh, excited about that one. I This was one of the books that um, I'm part of a... Uh, book club and this is one of the ones that we're choosing between I don't know if this is the one that will be selected I am hoping so because it's the one that sounded most interesting to me and so I bought it uh, but even if it's not I will at some point pick that one up uh, another book I picked up new because it was on special was this one, The Adventures of Amina al-Sarafi by Shannon Chakraborty. Uh, I've heard lots of really good things about this one um, it says, a pirate of infamy and one of the most storied and scandalous captains to ever sail the seven seas, Amina al-Sarafi has survived backstabbing rogues, vengeful merchant princes, several husbands, and one actual demon to retire peacefully with her family to a life of piety, motherhood, and absolutely nothing that hints of the supernatural. But when she's offered a job, no bandit could refuse. She jumps at the chance for one final adventure with her old crew, that will make her a legend and secure her family's future forever. Yet the deeper Amina dives, the higher the stakes, for there's always risk in wanting to become a legend, to seize one last chance at glory, to save up just a bit more power, and the price might be your very soul. So this sounds amazing. I'm very excited to get to that one. 
Another one I picked up because it was on special and I'd sort of had my eye on it is This Devastating Fever by Sophie Cunningham. Uh, this one is, it says, Sometimes you need to delve into the past to make sense of the present. Alice had not expected to spend most of the 21st century writing about Leonard Wolfe. When she stood on Morel Bridge watching fireworks explode from the rooftops of Melbourne at the start of a new millennium, she had only two thoughts. One was, the fireworks are better in Sydney. True. The other was, is Y2K going to be a thing? Y2K was not a thing, but there was worse things to come. Environmental collapse, the return of fascism, wars, a sexual reckoning, a plague. Uncertain of what to do, she picks up an unfinished project and finds herself traps, trapped with the ghosts of writers past. What began as a novel about a member of the Bloomsbury set, a colonial administrator, publisher and husband of one of the most famous English writers of the last hundred years, becomes something else altogether. Just sounds really fascinating. I think that one's a literary fiction. Another one that I think is literary fiction is this one, Kokomo by Victoria Hannan. Uh, this one says, When Mina receives an urgent call from her best friend back in Melbourne, her world is turned upside down. Her reclusive mother, Elaine, has left the house for the first time in 12 years. Mina drops everything to fly home, only to discover that Elaine will not talk about her sudden return to the world, nor why she spent so much time hiding from it. Their reunion leaves Mina raking through pieces of their painful past in a bid to uncover the truth. So this one just sounds interesting. Again, this was another one that was I've had my eye on for a while and was on sale. This one was not on sale, but I'm very excited about this. Uh, this author is, uh, I've read one of her other books and it's a five star read for me. So I'm excited about this one. Uh, it's Elizabeth Acevedo and the book is Family Door. So the book of hers that I... Um, loved is the poet x uh, which is ya this is adult fiction so this may be a very very different beast but i'm excited about it nonetheless because i really really loved um the poet x the martyr woman are preparing for a gathering that will change their lives forever so when she decides to host her own living wake bringing together her family and community to celebrate her long life her sisters matilda pastora and camilla are concerned what has she foreseen? But Flor isn't the only one with a secret. Matilda has tried to hide the extent of her husband's infidelity for years and now must confront the true state of her marriage. Pastora, always on a mission to solve her sister's problems, needs to come to terms with her past. And Camilla, the youngest sibling, has decided she no longer wants to be taken for granted. Alongside their struggles, the next generation of martyr women face their own tumult of family obligations, infertility and heartache. So it sounds really good, but also love this author. Um, so yeah, I'm very excited about that. All right, on to some nonfiction now. So this is still my new books, and then we'll move into, um, we'll use that as our little bridge across to the secondhand books. So the first one is this tiny, tiny book um, that is called Stolen Sharpie Revolution, a DIY resource for zines and zine culture by Alex Reck. Um, so my husband and I are really into zines. We kind of collect them and where um a few years ago we uh, religiously went to the zine fair that was put on at the mca in sydney um we haven't been i think it got cancelled over covid or maybe it went on but we decided not to continue going but if it's back on again next year we'll be keen uh, we always talk about that we're going to like make our own zines and maybe see about having a stall at that um that fair but we'll see. <laughs> we'll see if we ever actually do it. We've got ideas, um, but we are not very good at follow through. So we'll see. <laughs> anyway, this is a book that my cats gave me um, as a little gift. Uh, so it's all about um, making zines and sort of ideas and, you know, ways to participate in the zine community, block using block printing, size templates, that sort of thing. So exciting we'll we'll do some we'll do some more reading about zines we love them okay and the other non-fiction book that i have is called the long shadow of the 19th century critical essays on colonial orientalism in southeast asia by farish a noor um with an afterword by peter carey um so this is oh i should have given you the call number for this one so the call number for stolen sharpie revolution was 070.593 the call number for this one is 325.59 um, so this is 
obviously, essays about colonial orientalism in Southeast East Asia. And it's to do with the, um, the sort of long reaching impacts of colonialism and uh, also looking at the writings of um, Europeans at the time when colonialism was sort of at its peak uh, in Southeast Asia. Uh, so we've got authors like Stanford Raffles, James Brooke, John Crawford, and Anna Lee, Leona, Leon Owens. Um, so some they were some of the authors that came from Europe uh, or the United States to Southeast Asia in the 19th century and then wrote about what they saw. But what this book is doing is kind of looking at how that is a lens and um, so some of the things that they've written about that perhaps have been accepted as you know truth and um, you know uh, an unbiased view definitely are biased and uh, yeah certainly not objective accounts so anyway I heard about this book it was referenced in something else I was reading and then I just really really wanted to read it so I bought it <laughs> um so i'm yeah i'm really excited to read some of these um some of these essays because i think that's going to be a really fascinating read okay let's move on now to the second hand books we've got two non-fictions which will be our little bridge one is not my father's son by alan cumming a family memoir the call number for this one is 791.4302809 um which is where the writings and biographies about um, film actors generally live. Uh, so this is just, um, this is not so much about acting. Um, Alan Cumming is an actor who I admire a lot. I like his work. Um, this is more about his past and sort of his troubled childhood um, and his relationship with his estranged father. Um, so yeah, this will be a fascinating read for sure. Uh, the other non-fiction book that I picked up is Boys Will Be Boys by Clementine Ford. This one I got for free. Uh, my mum was getting rid of it. She read it, uh, thought it was a useful book, um, but didn't want to keep her copy of it. The call number for this one is 305.31. Um, so I already had a digital copy of this book, which I also do, did for the Alan Cumming book as well. Um, but yeah, so just finding a physical copy was useful for me. So um, yeah, anyway, Boys Will Be Boys is all about, it says power, patriarchy and the toxic bonds of mateship. So Clementine, Clementine Ford is a um, feminist um activist writer uh who writes a lot about um feminism but also about parenting and um sort of what that means to parent a child in in a way that will hopefully help them to turn out to be not a horrible person um so yeah i'm looking forward to reading this one uh because i think it will be really important so it says boys will be boys examines what needs to change for equality to become a reality. It answers the question most asked of Clementine, how do I raise my son to respect women and give them equal space in the world? How do I make sure he's a supporter and not a perpetrator? Okay, on to some fiction now. Um, so these are the secondhand fiction books that I've picked up this month. The first one is Gods of, Sh of Shade, of Jade and Shadow. I've clearly tried to say both of those words at the same time. Gods of Jade and Shadow by Sylvia Moreno-Garcia. Um, Sylvia Moreno-Garcia is an author I have several books of. Um, they're sitting right here, actually. So this one will go next to these. Uh, the interesting thing about her is that she writes in very different genres and almost like every single book she puts out is in, from a different genre, which I find a really fascinating thing to do. Um, anyway, this one says... Uh, so they call it historical fantasy, which is a genre I quite like. So the jazz age is in full swing, but Cassiopeia Tun is too busy scrubbing floors in her wealthy grandfather's house to do more than dream of a life far from her small town in southern Mexico. Until the day she accidentally frees an ancient Mayan god of death who offers her a deal. In return for Cassiopeia's help in... Is it Cassiopeia or Cassiopeia? Anyway, 
uh, in recovering his throne, he will grant her whatever she desires. From the jungles of Yucatan to the bright lights of Mexico City and deep into the darkness of Zib Zibalba, the Mayan underworld, Cassiopeia's I don't, don't know if I'm saying that right. Uh, adventure will take her on a perilous cross-country odyssey beyond everything anything she's ever known. Success will make her every dream come true, but failure will see her lost forever. Um, so this sounds really, really good. Uh, and also just a, an author I'm quite fascinated by. This pile is getting very nerve-wracking. <laughs> uh, the next one is a YA, but it's one that I've had my eye on for a while, so I was excited to find a copy of. It's this one, Sherwood by Megan Spooner. Um, so this is, it says, Robin of Loxley is dead. Maid Marian doesn't know how she'll go on, but the people of Loxley Town, persecuted by the Sheriff of Nottingham, need a protector, and the dreadful Guy of Gisborne, the Sheriff's right hand, wishes to step into Robin's shoes as Lord of Lord of Loxley and Marian's fiance. Who is there to stop them? Marian never meant to tread in Robin's footsteps, never intended to stand as a beacon of hope to those awaiting his triumphant return, but with a sweep of his green cloak and the flash of her sword, Marion makes the choice to become her own hero, Robin Hood. So it just sounds like a really fascinating premise for a book. So even though it's YA, I thought I would grab myself a copy because it sounds really good. <laughs> okay, the next couple of books are ones I picked up literally yesterday. Um, I popped into a local Vinnie's, um, which is a secondhand shop here in Australia, um, and I grabbed a couple of books. This one is by Ethan Hawke. Um, so this is sort of my guilty pleasure, um, is that when I was in my early 20s, I was a bit obsessed with Ethan Hawke. So, uh, and I, he was sort of like the broody figure. Um, I guess I kind of conflated him with his character in Reality Bites. Um, sort of like the, yeah, anyway. That was, that's by the by. Anyhow, because of that, I sort of have a soft spot in my heart for Ethan Hawke. And I picked up this one, A Bright, Bright Ray of Darkness, that he wrote, I think, in 2021. Um, yeah, 2021. Uh, so, yeah. I'm, I'm going to read it. <laughs> I read one of his books back when I was obsessed with Ethan Hawke in my early 20s. Um, the name of which escapes me at the moment, but I will pop it up onto my, onto the screen for you. Um, and I recently found a copy of it. Let's see if it's in here. The Hottest State, that's what it's called. The Hottest State. I read that back in the day. I haven't reread it since then. Um, so I don't know what I would think about it now, but yeah, I'm, I'm going to have a go at this one as well. So it says... Hawke's narrator is a young man in torment, disgusted with himself after the collapse of his marriage, still half hoping for a reconciliation that would allow him to forgive himself and move on as he tries to manage the wreckage of his personal life with whiskey and sex. What saves him is theatre, in particular the challenge of performing the role of Hotspur in a production of Henry IV under the leadership of a brilliant director helmed by one of the most electrifying Falstaffs of all time. Searing, raw, and utterly transfixing, A Bright Ray of Darkness is a novel about shame and beauty and faith and the redemptive power of art. So it actually sounds really good as well. Um, but yeah, I, it's been a very long time since I've read Ethan Hawke's novel, The Hot Estate. So I don't remember, I don't know if it holds up, but anyway, that's what, that's what we're going to read. The next one is called The Gardener by Sally Vickers. Um... Now, I've never read any Sally Vickers before. I've heard her name. Anyway, this one is um, all about an artist. So it says, Artist Hassie Days and her sister Margot buy a rundown Jacobean house in Hope Wenlock on the Welsh marches. While Margot continues her London life in high finance, Hassie is left alone to work the large, long-neglected garden. She is befriended by eccentric, sharp-tongued Miss Foot, who recommends Murat, an Albanian migrant out of place among the locals, to help Hassie in the garden. As she works the garden in Murat's peaceful company, Hassie ruminates on her past life, the sibling rivalry that tainted her childhood and the love affair that left her with painful, unanswered questions. But as she begins to explore the history of the house and the mysterious nearby wood, 
old hurts begin to fade as she experiences the healing power of nature and discovers other worlds. So that sounds really, really good. Um, so yeah, even though I didn't know anything about the author and I've never read any of her books before, I thought I'd pick it up. Uh, three more to go. This is the last of the ones that I picked up yesterday. Um, so this is Cedar Valley by Holly Throsby. I may already have a copy of this, but it was only $4, so I thought I'll grab it anyway, just in case. I've read one Holly Throsby book uh, called Goodwood. Um, so this, I think, is part of the Goodwood. Yeah, this is the second book in the Goodwood. Um, I think there are maybe three <coughs> that are sort of related. Um, so it's kind of like small town mystery. Um, so it says, on the first day of summer in 1993, two strangers arrive in the town of Cedar Valley. One is a calm looking man in a brown suit. He makes his way down the main street and walks directly to Cedar Valley, curios and old wares, sitting down on the footpath where he leans silently against the big glass window for hours. The other is 21 year old Benny Miller, fresh out of university. Benny has come to Cedar Valley in search of information about who, her mother, Vivian, who has recently died. Vivian's mysterious old friend, Odette Fisher, has offered Benny her modest pale green cottage for as long as she wants it. Is there any connection between the man on the pavement and Benny's quest to learn more about her mother? Holly Throsby is the perfect guide as Cedar Valley and its inhabitants slowly reveal their secrets. So that should be a good one. Uh, the Only Woman in the Room by Marie Benedict is another. I wasn't 100% sure that this was fiction or nonfiction, but it's, um, I believe it's fiction. Um... So this one says, her beauty almost certainly saved her from the rising Nazi party and led to marriage with an Austrian arms dealer. Underestimated in everything else, she overheard the Third Reich's plans while at her husband's side, understanding more than anyone would guess. She devised a plan to flee in disguise from their castle, and the whirlwind escape landed her in Hollywood. She became Hedy Lamar, screen star. But she kept a secret more shocking than her heritage or her marriage. She was a scientist. And she knew a few secrets about the enemy. She had an idea that might help the country fight the Nazis if anyone would listen to her. Um, so you, actually it says it's a novel right on the back. So I don't know why I, was, I wasn't sure. A powerful novel based on the incredible true story of the glamour icon and scientist whose groundbreaking invention revolutionised modern communication. So very keen to get to that one. The last book that I've got here for you is called Untethered by Aisha Inun. The cover is beautiful. Um, part of the appeal for sure cut loose from the threads of tradition and family how do you start again Zia secretly longs to go to university but as a young woman in a traditional Muslim family she does what is expected of her and agrees to an arranged marriage to Rashid a man she barely knows cocooned by the wealth and customs of her family Rashid's dark moods create only the smallest of ripples in their early life together when growing political unrest spurs them to leave Sri Lanka and immigrate to Australia, Zia is torn between her fear of leaving her beloved family and the possibility of new freedoms. While on paper their new country welcomes them with open arms, their visas come with many restrictions, and for the first time, Zia faces isolation, poverty, and an increasingly unstable marriage that forms a cage stronger than any she's known before. Determined to carve a place for herself in, the, in this new country, Zia sets out on an uncertain on uncertain terrain and discovers her discovers friendship, devastating loss, and hope for a different future. One that asks her to consider not just who she is, but who she might become. So this just sounds like a really, really good read, and I'm excited to get to it. Okay, that's it. Those are the books of December that I have brought into my collection. Uh, let me know down in the comments if you have read any of these before if you are you know you think I should prioritize any of them on my TBR um, are there any books that I mentioned today that you hadn't heard of that you're now excited about please let me know I'd love to hear all about it um, all right I'll chat to you down in the comments but until then bye